I'm going to go through two grade one snare drum pieces. These involve a couple of new techniques that we've not done yet uh, and a new rhythm that we've not really looked at yet. So I'm going to go through those parts first. Starting with Madison March. The Madison March uh, is a march, it needs a march feel. There are four beats in each bar, we're very used to this time signature, uh, crotchets and, uh, and their rests. We have uh, from the very beginning two crotchets and then the third note has a flam. Flams are where we add an extra little note before the main note. It's very important to get the um, hand position correct for starting your flams. So the main note needs to be a high stroke and the smaller note needs to be right next to the drum. You then drop the sticks down as you would for your normal stroke with the small one hitting first and being quiet and the main one hitting second and being louder. Our rhythm on the fourth beat of the first bar is a dotted quaver followed by a semiquaver. When we add a dot to a note, uh, it adds an extra half of its value. So the note itself, the quaver, is worth half a beat. So half of a half is a quarter. So we're adding those two together. A half and a quarter makes three quarters. So it's three quarters of a beat. When we split a beat into quarters, that would be what we know as armadillo, our semiquavers. So the first note is going to last for three of those semiquavers, and then the last note, which is a semiquaver, will be on the fourth one. So it's like playing an armadillo, armadillo. Bum, 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 two, three, four, one. I call that rhythm group cheesecake. So we can make the cheese last for our three quarters and the cake on the last one. So our first bar would be cat, cat, flam, cheese, cake. I'm trying to subdivide our cheesecake, cheese, cake. We start off with forte dynamic using our flams and our cheesecakes. Uh, but we're diminuendoing through the first two bars, so gradually getting quieter. In the third bar, we come across a familiar rhythm in the fourth beat of our ant eater. Uh, and then the second line, more flams, more cheesecakes, uh, trying to keep really nice and steady. After all, this is a march. So the second line would be cat, flam, cake, cat. So we've got the flam on the beginning of the cheesecake. Exactly the same as in the second bar. So second line, second bar, start the same. Uh, carrying on, there's nothing else new. We've got an elephant at the end of the uh, second line instead of an anteater. Um, and the cres, uh, C -R -E -S -C dot stands for crescendo, which means that we're going to gradually get louder. Uh, at the very end, Nice crotchet rest, make sure you're counting them properly. And your very last flam has an accent on it. So this means to accent the main note, not the little one, the main note. So your stroke will be even higher for that. So little one, big one, drop, and make sure that that main note is nice and snappy and quick. When you're playing along with the backing, I've done a count in for four beats, four clicks, before you start. So it will go click, 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 play, play, flam, cheese, cake, and so on. Journeying home from the hills 
has three beats in a bar, so we're in three four time signature, three crotchets in each bar. Again, we're using the flams. We've got one in the third bar. In the fourth bar, at the end of the first line, uh, the composer's written a quaver on the first beat, followed by its quaver rest, instead of a crotchet. Uh, this would be ultra important if you were blowing an instrument or bowing an instrument to make sure that you kept it that length. For us on our drum, uh, there's not an awful lot of difference between the hips, but if we think that note nice and short and do a nice snappy little stroke, then that will make sure that it comes across as being shorter. So think the performance element of that one. Again, all these rhythms, we know it's about learning the order of them and putting them with the backing. Um, in the, on the third line, we have more quaver rests. So watch out for the second bar. Uh, accents as well, monkey, cat, key. So I said cat, even though it's written as a quaver, you could think a monk if you like. Monkey, mon, di. So if I do it in counting, it would be one and two and three and flam and then another cat with an accent on it on that second beat there. So just watch that second line, those two bars might need a little bit of practice on their own. Following through to the end, uh, we've got a diminuendo written at the beginning of the last line and then a whole bar's rest. So this little box hanging down uh, means a bar rest and our bar is worth three. So you're going to count your one, two, three rest. Then we play cat, monkey, monkey, mezzo piano, moderately quiet. And then we have another whole bars rest. One, two, three, before we do a quiet cat and a nice accented flam to finish. When we play um, along with the backing, the counting gives you six beats. So I've done two bars in, so it will go click, 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 and then you start playing. Make sure you don't start too loudly, it's only mezzo forte. We need to save it a bit for our forte section in the middle. The piece has brightly written at the very start, so we want a nice sort of playful, uh, light feel to this one. It's not as kind of heavy as the March one before it. <laughs> 